I've been using the iPad every day for the past three years, initially as a full-time student and later to manage all my work as a content creator. From taking notes to professionally editing my shots and working on graphic projects, I have thoroughly tested all the capabilities and limitations of the iPad, particularly focusing on the iPadOS software. So let's see how to get the most out of your iPad. Starting with the settings, some of the things I change right away when setting up a new iPad are the screen zoom options. In screen and brightness menu, you can choose to display as much information as possible on the screen. Especially if you have an iPad under 11 inches, I recommend activating it to optimize the available space. In multitasking and gestures, I have configured the following functions to move between various applications as swiftly as possible. Then for storage, iCloud will be the best option. When it comes to choosing the right storage capacity for your device, consider the benefits of a 128GB version, especially when paired with a monthly iCloud subscription. This combination not only provides ample space for your files but also ensures you have the flexibility to access them effortlessly from any of your Apple devices. Speaking from my own experience, I find iCloud to be a game changer when it comes to file synchronization. Imagine having all your notes synced between your iPhone, Mac and iPad in real time. It's a super useful feature, especially when you need to quickly review or glance at a note on the fly. Moving to the home screen, I have chosen to use the iPad as a genuine control center. I enjoy having certain information always visible and that's why I make extensive use of widgets. I'm a big fan of widgets because they help me organize various pieces of information. I always strive to maintain a certain consistency across all my devices. Therefore, just like on my Mac and iPhone, I've positioned the widgets front and center here, aiming to keep the same layout. Critical for me are always the calendar events and reminders that I use on a daily basis. Using the iPad without accessories can be quite limiting. In my opinion, a fundamental accessory, even more so than a case, is the Apple Pencil. Today, the iPad still distinguishes itself from the Mac world, Primarily thanks to the stylus. I consider it a must have for anyone with an iPad, irrespective of whether you are an artist or not. Whether it's taking notes during a lecture or sketching on the go, the pencil is the game changer. I've attempted to transition solely to Mac and iPhone multiple times, but until Apple releases a Mac compatible with the Apple pencil, which seems unlikely due to potential impacts on iPad sales, of course, it remains indispensable. Yes, it's a bit on the pricer side, but in my view, the iPad without the pencil loses its edge. Personally, I use it not just for drawing. Currently, I'm planning a new office and find it super handy for sketching furniture on Procreate, but also for editing photos on Lightroom. For sure, the Apple Pencil is just one of the many accessories to complement your iPad. If you need to connect external devices, a dongle is essential. I have used in the past years a keyboard case, specifically the Logitech model. I link in the description. However, I eventually decided to part ways with it. Initially, I tried transforming my iPad into a sort of laptop, but in my opinion, we are still too far away from achieving that, mainly due to app limitations and their construction. The browser, for instance, frequently display pages in mobile versions, and when forcing the desktop view, there are often issues you wouldn't encounter on a laptop. I recommend using a keyboard with a trackpad only if you anticipate doing a significant amount of digital writing. Instead, a really important accessory for me is the paper-like protective film. This film not only shields your device but transforms your interaction, especially with the Apple Pencil, dubbed paper-like for good reason. It recreates the feel of pen on paper, providing unique tactile experience. Artists and note takers will appreciate the satisfying resistance, subtle texture and the pencil on paper sound. However, it's essential to note that over time the paper-like film may develop slightly wear, potentially making the screen appear less defined. Despite this drawback, many users find the enhanced writing and drawing experience well worth the trade-off. 
Now let's talk about iPad multitasking. It's like unlocking a whole new level of productivity. The ability to handle multiple tasks simultaneously is what makes the iPad experience essential for my workday. One of my go-to features is split view and slide over. Split view is a favorite. It's like having two words on one screen. For example, when I'm recording, I keep the recording app on one side and the script on the other as I'm doing now. Or during a lecture, I have my digital book and note taking app open simultaneously. Now there's another feature called Stage Manager, bringing a Mac-like windowed experience to the iPad. Some users love it, but I must admit it's not my style. I find the classic split view more comfortable, especially when navigating with my fingers. And talking about gestures, I have to say that swiping between apps with four fingers is really a natural way, fluid motion that keeps the workflow seamless. These are those little details that only Apple can do. I really appreciate that there are plenty of natural gestures, such as, for example, the possibility to organize your windows directly from the menu of open applications. You simply need to drag one application over another and in this way you can organize different applications combined, somewhat similar to how different desktops work on macOS. In this case, I think that a great work is when you actually don't notice it and here Apple made the difference. And finally, there's another crucial gesture, using the Apple Pencil to capture a screenshot by sliding from the bottom corner and directly taking notes on it is so convenient when you are in a hurry and want to jot down a quick note. Next up, let's jump into my favorite apps and tools. Alexa, stop. I don't know why it hear me. First up, we have good notes hands down my go-to note-taking app. I've used it for years, from school to university. The reason I stuck with it? Well, it's not just a digital notepad, it's like having my notebooks organized just like in real life. I'm a fan of this approach because it adds a touch of old school skeuomorphism, making the transition from paper to digital feel incredibly natural and I really hope it will come back in the next years. Moving on to Lightroom Mobile, a powerhouse for photo editing directly on the iPad. It's like a breeze to enhance a tweak photos, especially with the precision of applying masks using the Apple Pencil. For more graphic tweaks, I turn to Affinity Photo. It's my go-to for graphic work, surpassing the iPad version of Photoshop in my books. I've used it extensively for all my graphic projects in the past years, so I really recommend it. Next up, Procreate steps in for the freehand drawing and it's responsible for many of my custom wallpapers. It's the perfect tool for artists and the iPad coupled with Procreate becomes a canvas of endless possibilities. Moving on, the world of video editing on the iPad is evolving. While it might not match up to its PC counterparts yet, apps like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut are getting closer, letting me edit videos on the go. Of course, talking about an iPad, we have also to explore the Apple ecosystem. And we can say that if you own an iPad, you are likely aware of the powerful synergy it shares with other Apple devices. If you're interested in learning more about the Apple ecosystem, I've created a comprehensive video explaining all the features and why I actually believe the Apple ecosystem is unbeatable. No offense, of course, to Android fans. First and foremost, let's not overlook essential features like AirDrop. Transferring files between devices has never been so fast and intuitive. Drag and drop and there go your files seamlessly from one device to another. But not only, because picture using your iPad as an extension of your Mac. With a simple cursor movement to the edge of your Mac, your iPad transforms into a second screen. It's one of my favorite uses of the iPad and I find it perfectly complementary to the Mac. When you need more space to extend your workflow or simply to have everything within a glance, this feature makes the experience of using Mac and iPad harmonious. So these were all my tips and tricks that I learned during these years I used the iPad. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you know other tips and you want to share something in the comments with other people. And as always, wishing you the best. See you soon.